Hello, this is the MeRC channel and I'm Dave. Welcome back. And this is build part two of the Dragonfly. And this is from Joyceway. So the first step I'm going to be doing is, well, you know what? I think we're going to be probably gluing on the wings first. Just thinking about that. And uh, before I do that, there is one thing I need to do. Okay, so first thing I did was remove the Dean's plug, desoldered the Dean's plug right here, and resoldered on an XD60. For my purposes, all my batteries have XD60s. And of course, don't forget to put the heat shrink on the wires first, slide it down there, so after you get it soldered on, you can slide it back and, and heat it, shrink it. So there it is, I think it came out pretty good. Okay, now that we got the connector done, that's replacing this Dean's plug with an XD60, I'm going to go ahead and start to assemble the wings. Now, this comes with some stickum on the side, so this plane can really be assembled with no gluing at all. But I think to be on the safe side, I'm going to put some glue around this edge here, as well as using the tape and that should hold it permanently because I don't plan on ever taking the wings off and uh, to be honest with you I've flown this other one the skipper several times and the wings never got damaged the nose got damaged but the wings never did so I think the wings are pretty safe and it has only a 700 millimeter wingspan so it'll fit in, in any vehicle of your choosing without taking it apart. So I think, yeah, I'm going to just go ahead and glue them on, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to be using some of this foam tack glue to go ahead and glue the wings on. And what I'm going to do is I'm still using the tape, the double-sided tape to hold it, but I'm going to be putting some glue along this outer edge and uh, pressing it together, pull it back apart, let it tack up, and then finally place it in there. That's the way this stuff works. You gotta let it tack up for about a minute or two. And I'm not gonna put it on this front edge. So no glue on this front edge because I really don't think that's gonna make very good contact here. The tape is gonna keep it a little bit away from it and it's kind of a bumpy surface and I just don't think putting glue on there is gonna help. So just along the top rim here and the bottom rim that's what I'll be doing. Now I've got my spars already poked in but not all the way through because when I push the wing up against it I'm going to pull it back apart like I said to let it tack up and I don't want these spars in the way but when I make my final contact I'm going to go ahead and push the spars through into the wing. Okay so that's what the plan is. Let's see how it works out. Now we'll go ahead and apply some glue. Just along the edge there. A little bit over here. We'll do the back side. Sorry if you can't really see it. I'm just concentrating here, you know. Can't always keep it on camera. I'm trying. But, uh, okay, so there it is. I got the glue all along the edge on both sides. Okay, next thing is we got to test fit it. So I need to run the wire through the hole. The sound may not be that good because I'm moving around so much. But that's part of doing the build. You can sniff some glue if you want to make it really exciting. But this glue isn't too bad. The... Uh, not as bad as some as far as the odor. Okay, now I'm just going to push it in. And it's a tight fit to be expected. Let's see if I can get it in here. All right, it's in there. All right, now I'm going to try to pull it back apart. And I may not be able to because it's so tight. Let's see. Okay, best laid plans. That sucker won't come out of there. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and push the spars in. 
All right. So there it is right there. I've got the spars in. See, the plan is to pull it back apart and let it tack up, but it's such a tight fit, I couldn't get it out. But I think it'll work. Since I can't get it out now, it probably won't come out later after the glue dries. On the other side, I guess we can go ahead and just peel the tape off first. So I guess you're learning from my experience what goes down on this thing. So there's some tape right here on the edge. Well, look at that. The tape doesn't even the tape doesn't even stick anyway. It doesn't even stick to the paint. So this tape is pretty useless. Let's just pull it off there. It ain't gonna work. So that's that. All right, we'll put a we'll put a little bit of glue right here this time where the tape was. And then we'll do the edges. My camera work here is not the best, but you get the idea. So the other wing probably should have uh, had that tape removed too, but I can't get it back apart. I guess that's a good thing, right? Oh, that tape's actually on there right there. Yeah, that tape worked. But the one on the edge didn't. One on the very end here, uh, the tape just peeled right off. It wasn't stuck good. But this tape here is good. Okay. Now we got to fish the wire through again. And let's see where that hole is right here. It's kind of more of a slit than a hole. And then we'll have to get these spars on. Again, sorry about the camera work. I don't even know if you can see what I'm doing, but I'm trying. All right, pull that wire through. And push it together. And this is the, this is the uh, hickey down here that didn't have the tape on it, so I'm going to press that, let it tack up, and then I'll press it back again. Now what I can do on this other side, uh, where I didn't have the tape, I'll just go ahead and put some glue in there now. I'll just let that glue get down in there, like that, and uh, let it seep down in there, and then we'll go ahead and press it together. All right, it's had a chance to tack up, so let's just start to press these two pieces in there good. And this is a not a quick drying cement, so you got time. Uh, we just don't want to let these little tabs break loose, so make sure that they get glued on there. And I'll press them again some more later. Give it a couple more minutes, but. Uh, so that's the main wings. Let's step back here and see what we have. So that's the main wings right there. And everything's looking good so far. Yeah, okay, so while we're waiting, let's just go ahead and put the splitter cable on for the ailerons. We've got our wires fished through earlier, so we'll just go ahead and put that on before we forget. Like that, just make sure the white wire goes to the yellow wire, black to black, and of course red's in the middle. So there it is right there. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. So that's the splitter cable. Got that done. Because we'll need that when we install the receiver. And that was for the ailerons. So I think what I'm going to do is file the end off this so I can get the two halves to come right up against each other tightly and then I can glue it instead of using the tape. I might still use the tape but uh, the kit came with this with this uh, tape which you were supposed to put over the edge. I may still do that but I want to get some glue on there to get it in nice and tight so I'm gonna file that. 
Okay, I went ahead and filed it. Let's see how it fits now. And there we go. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And I think we can get the glue on it now. Yeah, okay, so now we want to go ahead and we're going to put glue around these edges here and around there and some across here. And then we'll go and put it into the vertical stabilizer. All right, applying the glue. Got to apply it. That's an application of the glue. Just doing both sides here. Like that. That's pretty good. Let's see. Yeah, we could put a little bit right along here too. Where it makes contact. Just get it around there. Okay. Now, let's press it in there. Decal side up. There it is. Now, there is a spar that has to go in. Let's see if I can get that in. That's about it. Now normally we'd pull this back apart and let it tack up, but I mean this stuff is really adhering fantastically to this foam. So it doesn't look like we need to pull it back off. Okay, let's just move it right along. We'll do the next side. All right. Let me get this over here. And of course this time we're going to put some on the elevator where the two halves go together. Doing all that. Oh, I'm off camera again. That camera crew, I tell you. Got to lower their paycheck. All right, now, a little here. A liberal amount. I'm not worried about it. All right, that looks pretty good. I don't know what else we can do. All right, let's see here. Got to get that spar in place. And then, more importantly, we got to get this thing in the hole. There we go. Did you see that? I hope so. Now I'll just go ahead and push it in all the way. And even with all that filing, these still don't get really close together. But, um... They are sticking. I'm just going to go ahead and put a little more glue on that. And let that seep in there. Alright, we'll let that tack up and then we'll press it together later. Just want both of those halves to be together. So now I'm just waiting for the glue to dry and when that gets done, we can go ahead and put these pieces of vinyl on either side of the elevator where the seam is, get that done, and then we can put on the control rod using our Allen wrench for the elevator. And that goes right in this area. And then we'll be ready to hook up the receiver and, and uh, test out all the control surfaces. All right, the glue's dry enough. Let's go ahead and put this vinyl patch on or whatever they call it. This is what goes across the seam. There it is. All right. That's the paper that I got on the exacto blade. All right, let's go ahead and put it on there. Now, we want it to be centered right in the middle. Best we can. And then put it down. It just makes it a little more strong so it doesn't break loose. 
and then we'll put another one on the bottom. And let's put that on. All right, now we got to attach this uh, control rod here from here over to here. And that shouldn't be too hard. I want to go with the second hole. Let's put that on there. And then that'll go in there. Right like that. Let's make sure that's level. Now we can adjust it later as we get the uh, radio set up. And just tighten that down lightly. Okay, there it is. Now we can go ahead and put the receiver in. So here's the receiver I'm using, and that's the FreeSky X6R right there. And you can see up here is S bus. I won't be using that. And then you got your channels one through six. So we'll start out with the ailerons on channel one, then elevator on channel two throttle on channel 3 and rudder on channel 4 so that's how I'm going to hook it up alright go with the ailerons now I found out that uh, ground was towards the top signals towards the bottom so white wire goes up like that there's the ailerons next we need the elevator and they actually have these Label, there's the throttle. Okay, there's the elevator right there. Okay, let's put that on. This time it's going to be the brown wire that goes towards the top. All right, now we need the, the uh, throttle. That's on channel three. Okay, going on channel three with the throttle. And this is just the way my radio is set up. Yours may be different. But that's channel 3. And then the last channel is the rudder. Right here. Brown towards the top. Alright, brown, white, brown, white. And there it is. Okay, now let's get the radio and a battery and we'll see if it all works. So this plane is replacing my Hobby King Skipper which got damaged and uh, I'm going to use the same battery as I used in the Skipper. So there it is. And this is the receiver out of the Skipper. There's the Velcro strap right there. Get that out of the way. And the battery, the base of the battery goes on the line that says battery. I'll just show you here. There's actually a line right in there that says battery. You just put the base of it there or use that as a reference anyway. And then you can put the Velcro strap on like that. That's all there is to it. All right, now I got to get the radio. All right, the radio's on. I'm just going to tuck the receiver down in here, keep it away from the prop. We'll go ahead and plug in the battery. And since this was bound to this receiver before in my skipper, it should work. But we never know. Let's see what happens. All right. I don't hear anything. All right, so I found the problem. And the problem was, you might have noticed on the close-up, when I connected the wires, I had uh, the throttle wire plugged in backwards. So I was grounding out the bus. So that's why I wasn't getting anything. So now let's give it a try. All right. Go ahead and turn it on. There's the sound. Okay, now the question is, 
What have we got? You tell me if it's right. Here's the throttle here. Can you feel the air blowing at you? I don't know. Anyway, uh, it looks like it's going the right direction. And here's the ailerons. And you can see there's very little travel in there. So if I, if I go this direction, that'll make the plane tilt this way. Yep, that looks correct. Okay, now the elevator. Yep, that'll make the plane pull out like that. Uh, so that's it. That's basically it. The uh, rudder is right here. So rudder is going to make the plane go that way. So everything's going the right direction, and that's kind of what I suspected because it was already in the Hobby King Skipper. And the Skipper is the identical plane, just a different color. So I previously set up my radio, and uh, in the previous video, if you look at that, I show a close-up of the radio screen and what my settings are as far as the uh, DR and Expo. It always does that with the telemetry thing if you're too close. But yeah, I've got the uh, DR and Expo set up in here. I show that in the other video, so I won't repeat it, but go back and look at the first video and I show how I've got that set up. Very low rates on this, so you don't get very much travel. And there's a lot of Expo, because you don't want much going, <laughs> much activity. Uh, the rudder is 100%, and of course the throttle is 100%. But other than that, it's uh, really dialed down a lot. So that's basically all there is to it. I might go ahead and laminate it. Now I've got to pull this, uh, this balloon up over the receiver and put a tie wrap around it. I'll just go ahead and uh, put this balloon back over it. like that and then I can put a little tie wrap around it there we go Just tuck that down in there and we can spread the antennas out and then put the lid on. There. And that should be it. Ready to roll. Thanks for watching. Any questions, put them under the video. And uh, I'll try to answer them. And uh, if you're interested in seeing me laminate the bottom, I can show that in another video. But I think this video is long enough, so we'll talk to you later. This is Dave, signing out.